I'm Professor Duke Corata, and we want to look at uh, some elements of thermodynamics. The basic concepts in thermodynamics are uh, energy, heat, and work. So this is energy, heat, and work. Work. These are the key elements in thermodynamics, and thermodynamics is basically a study of the energy transformation in systems. So I've used the word system. This is very important in thermodynamics. System is that part of the universe in which you have a special interest. If you are an engineer, if you're working on a machine, that machine becomes your system. If you're a scientist or a researcher, and in the laboratories that set up, whether it's a distillation unit, is your system. And the word system is very critical in thermodynamics because there are different types of systems. We have an open system, and in an open system, matter can be transferred between the system and its surroundings. So that means that you have to define what is surroundings. Surroundings, on the other hand, is where you make your recordings or is in the vicinity of your system. So if you have a system, you have a system, let's call it system, and you have your surroundings. Open system, you, are, you can transform matter between the system and your surroundings. Then the other one is the closed system. Naturally, it follows that for a closed system, you are not able to transfer matter between the system and your surroundings. And then the last one is an isolated system, which is a closed system. Isolated system, which is a closed system. Isolated system. It's a closed system, point number one. And it's not in mechanical or thermal contact with its surroundings. There's no mechanical contact, thermal contact with its surroundings. So when you see the word thermal, temperature comes to your mind. So that means that heat cannot be transferred between the system and its surroundings. And in thermodynamics, when this heat can't be transferred between the system and the surroundings, we refer to that system as being adiabatic. We refer to that system as being adiabatic. So anytime you have thermodynamics problems and you see the word adiabatic, it means that there's no heat transfer involved. And heat in thermodynamics is denoted as Q, so that in adiabatic systems, Q normally is assumed to be zero. And you've also talked of no mechanical contact between the system and the surroundings. Otherwise, there's no work which can be done across the walls. There's no work being done across the walls. That's what we mean by no mechanical contact, no thermal contact, that means no heat transfer, closed system, that means there's no, there's no transfer of matter between the system and the, and the surroundings. Now, this term system and surroundings have become very, very important, especially when we are defining work. For example, we can talk of work being done on a system and work being done on the surroundings. So that brings us to the concept of work. And work is something which can be quantified. Work can be quantified in terms of simple calculations where we know that work or the quantity of work is gotten from force times displacement. Force times displacement. So that if you have, for example, a trolley, let us say you have a trolley, as a trolley, and this trolley you want to drag it through some distance x1 meters, and you are applying a force F, then the work is F times X1. So it's force times displacement. And you know that the units of force is normally newtons. The units of displacement will be in meters. So that work is basically newtons times meter. And it's a newton meter. But that's not the only unit of work. You can have a situation where you are dealing with lit atmospheres or you're dealing with calories. So how do you convert that? So you just remember your gas constants, which we call R, or a gas constant. And the gas constant R is basically 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. It can also be 1.98 calories per Kelvin per mole. And 
it can also be 0.0821 liter atmospheres per Kelvin per mole. And why have I mentioned the gas constants? This helps in conversions in terms of dimensional analysis. Suppose I wanted you to give me work in liter atmospheres or in calories, then if your work in joules was y joules, if I want it in liter atmospheres, all you need to do is very simple. Just multiply y joules, multiply by 8 point, uh, 0 0.0821, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres, divided by 8.314 joules. And that will give you work in liter atmospheres. Similarly, if you want it in calories, then doubling calories will be y joules times 1.98 calories divided by 8.314 joules. Very, very important that you know these units in which you can work with. So the answers might, you might be working in a system where you are, you are, your calculations will give you late atmospheres and you want to know how many joules you are dealing with or how many calories you are dealing with and so forth. So it's very important to know the gas constants. Now, we are talking about what? We are talking about that story of ours, which you are dragging and you have dragged it to a distance which you call x1 meters, x1 meters. You are applying a force F, which we are assuming that force F is constant. We are assuming F is constant. Now, what I want you to know is that while the total work done is force times the displacement, W, we have said is Fx1, but you must realize that this segment is, can be divided into many, many small segments. We can divide them into many, many small segments and calculate the work done in the segments so that the total work is the sum of the work done in those segments. And in thermodynamics, we talk a lot about infinitesimal distances. Infinitesimal distances. Very important to note that term, infinitesimal distances. So that we can talk of this total length as being made up of small distances, dx1, dx2, and so forth, dxn. So that the total work is the work done in the infinitesimal segments, which will now be dw. dw is equal to f dx. Not, we are not talking of df because we said f was constant. It's just like a number. It's constant. It's not changing. 